What? Kanata, Tiffany, do you mind? <clears throat> what makes a fighting game stand the test of time? It's a combination of memorable characters, engaging gameplay, and immersive storyline. All of which rival schools have fed up the ass. What's up, my little carcomaniacs out there? I am Calcamo, the forger of pain. I'm a pro wrestler that loves horror, anime, and video games. I'm also the South American Extreme Champion from Roughly Alliance Revolution War Ecuador and welcome back to Today we're gonna see why this awesome franchise needs a comeback. This franchise is a team-based fighting game like Marvel vs. Capcom. Rival Schools has a diverse cast of characters, each with their own unique fighting style and abilities. Whether you prefer fast and agile fighters or the heavy hitters, there's a character for you. The game's story mode is a thrilling journey through a conspiracy that threatens the safety of the students and the city. Like Harry Potter before the Harry Potter movies. The first time I gazed my eyes upon this game was on a friend's house and his brother called Franklin and Nihel Mike, playing then my pirated copy of Pocket Fighter. And inside it had the demo for Rival Schools. It was love at first playthrough. <laughs> Before I became a serious collector of sorts, back in the day, all my games were pirated. But anyway, that's besides the point. I knew I needed this game in my life. So, what did I do? I got a Japanese copy for Rival Schools. Why, you may ask? I know this deserves further explanation. In Panama, where I come from, for the most part, we always got pirated Japanese games. And this was going on since the 80s. Ooh, yeah! The good old days that instead of an S, you got a NASA! For Panamanians by age, Japanese wasn't a problem. I mean, it's not like I knew how to speak or read the language. But we were kids, we were used to having Japanese games. The language barrier wasn't a problem. We didn't know better, we just wanted to play. It's not like I didn't want the English version, it's just that we never got one. So the game came with two discs. Actually, one of them was the main feature. It included a mode where you created a custom character in a dating simulator. Depending on your choices, it affected the story and your character's moveset and special abilities. I had no idea what I was doing, but I had a blast! <laughs> Apart from that, it had some awesome mini-games that included mostly the sports team, ranging from baseball to football. Yes, for us Latinos, that's the real football, not soccer. Before we address the dating sim disc and the most interesting part of the Japanese version of Rival Schools, let's talk about the fighting game disc and the only thing America got. Like I said before, this is a team-based fighting game, but the tag team battles were like nothing we'd seen before or at least not in 3D. Combining powerful moves, over-the-top combos, and those epic team-up attacks. 
keep in mind this was way before Tekken Tag Tournament 2, just to give you guys an example. Capcom took a lot of inspiration from their previous tag team games, like X-Men vs Street Fighter, where you could do some awesome air combos. In Rival Schools you can also perform those awesome combos, and this one is one of those games where the entry barrier is pretty easy and fun. The other aspect that I love about Rival Schools is its cast of characters. Even for the time, they're not your typical cliché fighters. All right, maybe some characters from the American high school team. But for the most part, all the students that represent different schools are refreshing and unique in their own way. You'd think they're all students, but oh no! The teachers, counselors, and directors also duke it out. It was a brawl of epic proportions. And speaking of epic, how could I forget? the jaw-dropping moment when Sakura from Street Fighter Alpha 2 made a surprise appearance. This blew my 14-year-old brain back in the day. To make sure the game would quote-unquote sell, they included a known character. But I can tell you something, at least in Panama, no one was running to buy a pirated copy of the game for Sakura. I mean, we all love Sakura, but it was because of the Pocket Fighter demo we found out that this game even existed. I'm not complaining about Sakura, I'm just saying. And don't even get me started about the music. To this very day, I listen to the opening to get me pumped up in the gym. And of course, the rest of Rival School's OST. Brothers and sisters, gear up for this magical journey with my student creation, Pecheche Teto. After picking his birthday, I think, we'll have to choose which school they belong to, their gender and appearance. And I must warn you, each school term or class, remember, I'm just guessing here because everything is in Japanese, um, during each school term, the physical education teacher will teach us some moves. It's basically a training mode. But here, I had to use a GameFAQs guide and learn some kanji to feel like the master of Japanese martial arts. Later on, it gets trickier when they mixed up different moves. After each exam, they give you a grade that affects, I guess, your character's stat. Does that matter? I don't know, but it sounds good. Between periods, you can decide which part of the school you want to hit up and encounter, various game characters you can talk to, and crack some stand-up jokes with them, you know, whatever. After a while, you have to prove what you've learned in a fight with the professor. But beware, the buddy who steps into the ring with you depends on who you talk to and share stuff. And you better make a good impression. It's like you have to earn some love to avoid getting beaten up. <laughs> Every now and then, you can participate in the aforementioned mini-games, where you score points to level up. It's like a game within a game! When I had the chance to play the dating sim part, rest assured, I didn't waste it. I went all out to charm Tiffany, because she's got two compelling reasons. It was a gamble, because I didn't know what I was choosing. 
I picked randomly and hoped for the best. And guess what? I did it! I don't care what they say, in my mind and heart, Tiffany became my girlfriend. After this moment of glory and countless interactions with my schoolmates and those pesky rival schools exam and training with the teacher, I finally earned my special moves and my super double team attack. When you finish a whole school year, they say cool and entertaining anime style cinematic, something that wasn't so common back then. Each school turn might take about two to three hours. It's a blast due to the novelty, but every time you create a character, you'll have to play through the whole thing. And after a couple of times of playing the whole thing for each character, it gets a bit tedious. Continue. I still wish friends of the franchise would make a patch with the English translations. It's a different mode and something in common in fighting games to this very day. Sometime later, in the year 1999, we got another Japanese-only exclusive for rival schools called... Let me see if I can get this right. Neketsu Sensu Niki 2. It was an update with two new characters, new minigames for the dating sim, and more ridiculous, awesome super moves. I don't have too much to say about the fighting game disc. It's an update, it's more of the same, but that's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. But as you expect from a Japanese copy, the main event was basically a sequel to the dating sim. The fighting game part, like I said before, was there, but it was playing second bananas to the dating sim. Again, here I don't want to say much about the dating sim part. It's been improved upon a little more than the fighting game part, but like I said before, it's more of the same. If you're into this, I recommend it. Rival School's graphic and art style hold up remarkably well, even by today's standards, especially its Dreamcast sequel. Ah, yes, I finally get to talk about the Dreamcast. You gotta love that spaceship controller. Anyways, its sequel was named Project Justice. Why did they suddenly change the name of a well-established franchise? Well, it's a little touchy. It was because of the Columbine shooting incident that it was happening close to the game's release, so it's pretty understandable. From a marketing standpoint, it's not a good idea to keep the name Rival Schools. The game's action is fluid and engaging, with vibrant colors and impressive animation. <laughs> Adding a third character to the team, more like a King of Fighters game. Of course, you can make a devastating 
three character super moves that will keep you coming back for more, baby. Capcom maintained their tradition of ridiculous super moves. And I don't have a problem with that. They kept all the previous double team attacks and the new and improved triple team mayhem. There are so many to count and I love them all. Now, if you compare the previous Rival School games with their Dreamcast sequel, dude, it's leaps and bounds ahead. The story mode has a significant upgrade, with branching paths adding to the replay value. And the roster has been bumped with more secret characters. Ooh, yeah! These were the heydays before DLC. Capcom hasn't forgotten entirely about this saga, with Kiyosuke being a playable character in SNK vs. Capcom 2. Batsu has proven to be the favorite of the bunch. He's been a part of many games like Project X Zone. Also, being a playable character on the underrated Tatsunoku vs. Capcom for the Wii. Let's not forget about Hideo and Kyoko, that made an appearance in a collaboration and also a Japan exclusive PS2 game called Namco Cross Capcom. Tiffany and Hinata making a cameo in the background of the beach stage for Street Fighter V. Speaking about Street Fighter V, Akira made it a playable character in the last season of that game. Akira wins! Kudos to Capcom. It seems they put in the most effort to revive, or rather, create interest in this stuff and the DLC for Dead Rising. The name was a not-so-subtle jab at themselves, using the most ridiculous combinations of their titles. Super Ultra EX Plus, uh, okay. Super Ultra Dead Rising 3 Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha. In this DLC, the Dead Rising cast are cosplaying as Shoma from Rival Schools and other Capcom shenanigans. They got super creative. Well played, Capcom. Well played. And I'm not done yet. The Mugen fan community certainly have not forgotten about the franchise, making 2D sprites for Batsu, Hinata, and Tiffany. Adding their taunts, hyper combos, and their triple team finishers. I know this has been a long video, but I keep this franchise close to my heart, and it has inspired me a lot. When I produced my first gaming show in Panama, I had it for five years, and I did a whole episode dedicated to Rival Schools. Actually, the whole intro to my show was a homage to Rival Schools. <laughs> Also, back in 2018, Hideki Itsuno, the creator of the franchise, stated that there was a possibility for a Rival School 3. And maybe, just maybe, in this new Capcom Renaissance, we might get it. And that wish may come true.
If you're looking for a franchise that never gets old, then look no further than Rival Schools. With its unforgettable characters, gripping storylines, addictive gameplay, it's just as thrilling as today as it was back in 1997 until a 2001 Dreamcast sequel. Uh, Tiffany, can you hold this? I think Hinata wants to tell me something. Yeah.